One afternoon in France around the 1940s, a man named Nock was seen trying to escape from debt collectors. When he was caught, the debt collector threatened to kill him if he didn't pay his debt by the next day. The next day, Nock was wandering in the port. He couldn't find a way to pay all his debt, he even had to borrow more money from someone just to pay his debt and provide for himself. At that moment, he saw a job vacancy ad for a cruise doctor. Despite having no medical knowledge or experience, he still applied for the job. The captain was doubtful when he saw Nock's appearance, but he had no other choice since finding a doctor at that time was already hard enough to do. He then invited Nock to the ship. Shortly after the ship left for the cruise, the debt collector whose name was Lansky, along with his friend showed up to catch Nock but they were too late. Nock waved at them from the ship while mocking them and smiling. On the ship, Nock felt so free after managing to get away from Lansky, but suddenly, the ship's crew came and brought a patient for him. He didn't know what to do with the patient but lucky for him, the patient told him that he had typhus and even told him how to cure his sickness since he had just suffered from it the last week. Nock heard at him carefully while taking a note and following his instructions. That day, after successfully treating his first patient from earlier, Nock went around the ship to get some fresh air. While walking around, he found one of the passengers suffering from sunburnt after taking too long sunbathing. The passenger told him not to worry because she was sure that after two weeks, the redness would heal completely. Suddenly, Nock remembered that he used to read a book about how to make a skin cream to get rid of redness, and that night, after gathering all the ingredients he needed, he began to mix all of them to make the cream. He then gave it to the passenger the next day. Nock was certain that the redness on her face due to sunburn would soon disappear. Two days later, when Nock was sleeping, the ship's passenger from the day before came to him and showed her face which was starting to heal. It turned out that the cream made by Nock was so effective. She was so happy that she even offered to pay for as much as he wanted as long as he wanted to make the cream again. Hearing the request, he was very happy. For the first time in his life, he could earn money without scamming someone. Not only that, but the condition of his first patient was also slowly starting to improve. He then met the captain of the ship and thanked him from the bottom of his heart. Since he was accepted to work on the ship, he felt like he had been given a chance to start his new life. Five years have passed, and now Nock has become a real doctor. That afternoon, Nock was on his way on a train to a remote village on the outskirts of town. He was asked there to replace a doctor who had just resigned named Parpalade. Upon arriving at the clinic, Nock met the couple guarding the place. They told him that the reason why the last doctor resigned was that there were only a few residents of the town who visited the clinic. Even though most of the residents in this village had a modern lifestyle, but they still didn't believe in medical treatment. Hearing the story, he said that he had a way to make the residents visit the clinic. The next day, after preparing the clinic, Nock paid the local postman to inform the villagers that on Tuesday, for the clinic's grand reopening, he would give free treatment to everyone. After that, Nock went to the nearest pharmacy and met the owner named Mr. Musquiz. When he found out that Nock was the new doctor in town, he confided that whether there was a doctor or not, the pharmacy would always be quiet. If this continued, he would soon go bankrupt. Nock then offered cooperation, he told Mr. Musquiz that currently, he planned to give free treatments to the residents of the town. He was sure that they would come to the clinic despite being healthy after hearing the word free. He would then try to open people's minds about a healthy lifestyle and persuaded them to buy vitamins from this pharmacy. In the end, it was a win-win solution. Nock would get a lot of patients and Imar Hermusquit would get more customers. When Nock returned to the clinic, the postman came to inform him that he had completed his task. In the middle of the chat, a beautiful girl named Adele came to give a letter to the postman. Seeing the beauty of Adele, Nock was so fascinated. For his whole life, this was the first time he saw a woman as beautiful as her. When Adele left, the postman told Nock about Adele's story who had suffered from poverty since she was a child. She had no relatives and lived alone. She currently worked for one of the residents of the town named Cuck. Hearing that, Nock was touched. He knew that well how it feels to live like that. The news about Dr. Nock had spread in town and people kept talking about him, but there was a pastor named Lupus who didn't like him. He said that Nock was impolite. As a new resident, Nock should introduce himself to the townsfolks and the mayor before opening the clinic. On Tuesday, all the residents came to visit Nock's clinic, including the cuck who said that she was not sick. She just came because she liked everything's free. Even though he was annoyed as a professional doctor, he still examined her. After being examined, Nock advised her that in old age, she's quite vulnerable to suffering from gout, pneumonia, or other dangerous diseases. So, to keep her away from those and to stay healthy, she had to routinely took vitamins and not overexert herself. 
Nock then told her that he would come to visit her house every day to check on his health. Nock knew how the patient would be lazy to go back and forth to the clinic so for the sake of the resident's health, he was willing to visit them at their houses. Not long after, Lupus showed up, but when he was about to get angry, Nock immediately checked on his condition and then gave him a prescription for vitamins. Thanks to the free treatment, Lupus was discouraged from scolding Nock and just quieted down. After that day, every day, Nock visited the residents' houses one by one for routine checkups. Yeah, même chose. Tu sais. <coughs> A few days later, at the bar, people kept praising Nock's satisfactory service. Lupus was annoyed because since he came to town, the residents started forgetting about him. That night, Nock, Lupus, and some residents had dinner at the mayor's house. There, everyone praised the doctor's amazing job, including the rich widow named Pons. After introducing himself, Nock invited Pons to seek treatment at his clinic. He hoped that after experiencing how satisfying the service is, she would definitely recommend the clinic to her friends. Since she was interested in the clinic in the first place, she decided to accept the invitation. The next day, when Pons came for the treatment, as usual, Nock explained the importance of healthy living and persuaded her to do so. Hearing the explanation, Pons realized how important it is to live healthily. She offered to Nock to come to her house five times a week to check on her and was willing to pay a big sum of money. In the afternoon, when Nock returned to the clinic after the routine checkups, he met Adele. She confided that since Cuck had her checkups, she started acting lazy. She just stayed in bed all day. Even just take water to drink, she had to ask someone to get it for her. Hearing Adele's story, Nock decided to do something about it. Même pour petit besoin. Oh, ça me donne le vertige. Levez-vous. On recommence. Une, deux, un, deux, un, deux, un. Oh. One day, after he finished working at the clinic, Elizabeth visited him and suddenly take off her clothes to tease him. Nock, who had his heart for Adele was not tempted by her and instead politely asked her to leave. That night, the whole town, including Nock, had a party at Ponza's house. In the middle of the party, Nock accidentally saw Adele arguing with a man and even slapped him and left. Nock then rushed to chase her and offered her a ride back home. On the way, Adele confided that the man earlier was her boyfriend and they just broke up because he was caught cheating on her. Seeing the woman that he liked was sad, Nock tried to cheer her up. Back at the party, when Lupus went to the kitchen, he caught a beggar stealing food. It turned out that the beggar was Lansky, a debt collector who used to chase after Nock five years ago. Even though he was caught stealing, he was not afraid of Lupus. He even threatened that if he dared to report him, he would break Lupus's neck. Because he was afraid, Lupus couldn't do anything but let him do what he did and stay silent. The next day, Adele showed up at the clinic. She looked worried and asked Nock to come with her. On a hill, Adele showed a dog that was seriously injured lying on the ground and couldn't get up. Fortunately, the dog's leg was only sprained and after being healed, the dog immediately ran away. The weather at that time happened to be good so they stayed a little longer to enjoy the beautiful scenery and shared each other's life stories. From that time, both of them were getting closer. That afternoon, when Nock went to the pharmacy to take Mr. Musquid out, without him realizing, Lansky secretly watched him from a distance. After he picked up Mr. Musquid, they both went to a hotel and met the owner. Nock offered to renovate the hotel and made it into a medical center where there would be rooms for checkups, a rehab center, motels for the patient's family to stay overnight in, and a canteen, or in short, he was planning to build a hospital. Since the whole town, including the hotel owner, believed in him, she agreed to the plan without hesitation. The next day on the road, Lansky met Nock. Nock who saw Lansky standing in front of him was shocked. He was afraid that Lansky would tell on him to the townsfolks. Lansky told him that since his boss's death, he had to live as a vagabond and wander from town to town. He didn't expect the Nock who used to deceive other people could finally live in prosperity. Afraid that Lansky would uncover the truth, he immediately paid all his debt to him and told him to leave the town but Lansky used that chance to blackmail him. He asked threefold of the money that Nock owed to him or he would uncover his disgrace to the townsfolks. If he gave him the money, he promised to leave the town. Realized he couldn't fight back, Nock could only obey and asked for time to collect the money. In the afternoon, when Nock checked on Cuck's health, she confided that since the morning, she had to do the housework by herself because Adele was sick. Nock, who was worried, immediately went to see her. Seeing Adele lying weakly, he suggested she came to see him in the clinic for further examination. Later, before he left, Nock gave Adele a gift while saying that he planned to take her outside and gave her the gift later, but since she was sick, he couldn't do his plan. 
Hearing how caring knocked to her, she was so happy, even though it was just a small thing, it felt special for her. A few days after the examination, Nock was surprised to see the result. He then contacted a fellow pulmonologist for a consultation. Based on the results, the pulmonologist explained that Adele had suffered from tuberculosis. He then begged his fellow doctor to treat Adele until she fully recovered from her sickness, and no matter what the cost, he would pay as long as she could recover. The next day, after packing stuff, Nock went to take Adele to the bus station. Before parting, Nock kissed Adele and told her that he would make sure that she would recover. Unfortunately, from a distance, Elizabeth who happened to pass by saw their intimacy and was jealous and hurt since she was rejected by Nock. She then went to the church to complain to the pastor. At the church, she told what she saw earlier to Lupus. Not only that, but she also slandered that Nock almost raped her and took off her clothes when she was being examined. Hearing that story, Lupus felt that he had the chance to destroy Nock's career and reputation. On the other, side after escorting Adele, Nock went to the hotel he planned to be made into a hospital. The hotel owner there told him that his friend, Lansky, had been renting the hotel room since yesterday. Nock was shocked to hear that and immediately went to Lansky's room to meet him. He immediately gave him the money that he promised and told him to leave the village, but Lansky refused. He told Nock that he asked for more money from him and threatened to tell on him if he refused to give it. Hearing that, Nock couldn't do anything but agreed. He then told him to meet at the clinic in the evening to give the money. Later that evening, Lansky came to the clinic to collect the money, but before giving the money, Nock offered him a drink. When Lansky drank it, Nock smiled because he had succeeded in his plan. Turned out he had mixed laxatives to Lansky's drink to give him his lessons. On the other hand, Lupus was seen going to the mayor's office to complain about Elizabeth's story earlier. Lupus was sure that Adele's departure was definitely because she was pregnant. He also explained about Nock's attempt to rape Elizabeth but somehow, the mayor didn't seem to be angry at all. He then explained that Adele's departure from the town was to seek treatment at a bigger clinic in the city, while Elizabeth's story might just be made up by her because she used to spread false stories about the mayor back then. Hearing that, Lupus couldn't say anything to respond. The next day on the street, while chatting with Pons, the postman came to knock and informed him that currently, his friend Lansky was suffering from diarrhea and needed his help. Nock pretended to be shocked and told him that he would visit him as soon as possible. When he visited Lansky later that day, Lansky begged him to cure his condition. While holding back his laugh, Nock told him that he could help him with his sickness if he agreed to sign the agreement not to bother him again. He said that he would report him to the police if he still did it. Driven by his condition, Lansky had no other choice but to sign the paper. Since that day, Lansky was none to be seen in the town. The next day, Nock visited Adele to check her condition. In her room, Nock told her that the doctor who treated her was the best in the country and would make sure that she would be cured of her illness. Since she was all alone all her life, Nock caring for her felt so special and touched her heart. She suddenly told Nock that if one day she dies, she asked Nock not to cry for her. She wanted him to live a happy life. Hearing that from her made Nock so sad and couldn't hold his tears. At night, Nock read the letter that Adele given to him earlier when he visited. In the letter, Adele mentioned that she really liked the color blue, so to make a surprise for her return to the town, Nock decided to paint the soon-to-be hospital building blue. He then informed the hotel owner the next day. He thought that it would be the most beautiful surprise for her discharge, but in the middle of the chat, the mayor came and informed that Adele had died after fighting against her sickness. After hearing the news, Nock went back to his clinic. He felt so broken. He cried so hard over the loss of his beloved woman. That afternoon at the church, all the townsfolks attended Adele's funeral and Pastor Lupus led the prayer. When everyone was grieving, Lupus took the opportunity to attack Nock. Lupus said that he felt sorry for Adele because, at the end of her life, she had been deceived by Nock. It turned out that before leaving the town, Lansky had uncovered Nock's past, who was often in debt and deceived many people. Lupus told everyone that a crook like Nock shouldn't be a doctor in this town. Hearing that, Nock finally opened up about his past. He told everyone that he did all that, scamming many people and having a lot of debt just so he could provide for himself. He did all that to be able to feed himself. All this time, he had learned to be a doctor to help everyone and be useful to the community, but if the people in town didn't want to be treated by him, then he would leave. After expressing his feeling, Nock went straight to the clinic and then packed his things. At the church, the residents are touched by Nock's words. They shared the results and changes they felt since the doctor came to town. Some had stopped smoking, some had their toothaches healed, some have felt healthier and fitter bodies, and the rest had various other kinds of healing. 
In the middle of the conversation, suddenly a boy came in and shouted that he just saw Nock pack his things. All of them suddenly flocked to chase the doctor, leaving Lupus alone inside the church. On the street, when Nock was about to leave, he was surprised to see all the townsfolks come and surrounded him. He was afraid of being beaten and thought that the residents were angry because they were deceived, but turned out, they all begged him not to leave. They told him that since his coming to the town, everyone had improved in health, they told him not to worry about Lupus because they would persuade him to open his heart to accept his presence. Hearing that, Nock was touched and happy. He decided to stay and would continue to serve the residents of the town.